Hi, window watchers. Believe it or not, this is a shoe. You know, my shoes are very funny things. They never say a word. They really do have tongues, you know. But not one word is heard. I wonder what they'd say to me if they could really talk. Would they care about the places that sometimes I make them walk? Would they care if they were dirty and, not, and they didn't shine like me? Or would they scold me good and hard for the way I let them be? I wonder. Well, Mr. Archie Wilson, what do you think about it? Would my shoes scold me or would window watchers' shoes scold them for letting them the way they be? You have a shoe repair shop and you've seen a lot of different kinds of shoes and in all different well, sizes and conditions and... Yes, I think they would, especially if you let them wear out like this particular shoe here is. I mean, here they've uh, worn the shoe so long they've run the heel way over, which oh. is not good for your health. Look at that. And uh, lots of people think it's bad when the sole is through on their shoe, but actually their heels are more important, especially on a growing child. Let's see. Oh, there's a hole. I can stick my finger right through that hole. Well, that's right. But this what, here is what I'm quite interested in. Look how that's worn down over there. It's not flat across the end. It's, it's almost slanted, just like a heel. But why is it bad for your health? You mean bad for the health of your feet? Well, if you wore one shoe, uh, one with a run-over heel, all day and one with a straight heel, I'm afraid that your left foot or whichever you'd have it on would be very tired at the end of the day. Where if they were both straight, you wouldn't be as tired when evening comes. You mean straight like the heels are on new that's shoes Yes, when you get that's them. the way they should be kept at all times. Well, how do you fix heels like that? Well, we take off like this top lift here and we uh, build this up with leather and we put a new top lift on. This piece here, I see even the wood on this heel of the shoe is all worn down and scuffed all up there. Yes. And you mean by piecing it then that you would take a piece of leather and, and uh, well, after you take this covering off and put it across so that the, the uh, heavy leather part is flat across there, right? Yes, we build this up and then we finish it all off so the shoe actually looks like a, a new, he a brand new shoe. And we can do the same thing with half soling them. With the sole of the shoe? Yes. Well now, is there something that we can put on our shoes right when they're new on the heels or something to keep them from s getting all worn down like this? Yes, thing? there's a metal uh, steel plate that you can put on the heel, but that lots of times marks up your floors. Uh, they call those clips? Uh, clips or heel plates is what we heel call plates. them, shoe repairmen, yes. And, uh, but I always suggest a rubber heel because they're easier for you, that way you won't slip and probably break an arm or leg on mm -hmm. slippery floors. Well, I know it's the safest, safest, safest thing to do. I know a long time ago, I don't know whether it's true anymore or not, but we used to put um, rubber soles, black rubber heels yes. on shoes, and they'd mark up the floors at home, just something terrible. Well, that's the thing of the past, that is at your shoe repair shops. I mean, if it's a first grade rubber, it will not mark floors, no matter if it is black. It's an unmarking compound. Something new that they have in there. Yes, well it's, they've had it now for four or five years or after World War II. Mm -hmm. So you would suggest then even if, um, well say perhaps, I don't know whether this shoe has it or not. Well now this shoe just has a regular piece of leather here on the heel. Yes. Um, would you suggest then taking these down and having a, a rubber heel put on there like for safety's sake? For like safety's say? sake I would, yes. Mm -hmm. Or they could wear them till the heel is partially wore over and then when they do bring them in Put on a rubber heel. I see. Well, now, there must be something that we can do with shoes when they're very brand new. Take them right out of the box. Is it good to just put them on and wear them, or is there something we should do to them first? No, I would suggest that the best thing would be to do is if you have a pair of shoe trees, to put them in like this. And, uh, that really flattens that That shoe really out, flattens it out, and you see the creases, creases in here. And uh, when you put your shoe polish on, or on a new shoe, it doesn't matter. You want to put a good coat of wax, because it will, uh, a good coat of wax, instead of scuffing like this here, well, it'll probably slide right over it. Oh, I and see. And that's the idea of keeping them nice and soft. Well, let's look at this, what do you call it, a shoe tree? The shoe tree, yes. Let's look at that shoe tree and see, see just what it is. Well, this particular type has a spring in here, it fits different size shoes. I mean, for uh, children's shoes or, or for ladies' shoes. In other words, if, the, if your shoe is narrower, well, then it just squeezes these two pieces of wood together like that. That's right. 
And if That's it's right. wider, why well, I suppose you have bigger, different sizes of shoe trees, right? True. What about the length of it here? I know all shoes aren't as the same length. Well, th there's this particular type, they're more expensive, but this also has a spring, and you squeeze it together like that, oh. and it'll fit a s smaller shoe. It can go... Uh, Either way, see? Sideways and down. Yeah, well, forth. here's a smaller shoe, and here's a larger shoe over here, and it will still straighten out the shoe. See oh, how that, see, see these creases in here, how it s straightens it out? Mm-hmm. Now let's take it out and see if we can see those creases in there when they're not, when the shoe tree is made. Oh, look at the way it all buckles see the wrinkles. up in there. All kinds of wrinkles. Well, what about polishing a new pair of shoes when you first uh, get your shoes? Are you supposed to polish them right away, or are you just supposed to put them on and wear them? No, polish them immediately, because, uh, like I think we mentioned before, we, uh, it would s stop uh, if you scratch, uh, stumble on the, like children would stumble, play in the rocky uh, soil or the school grounds with uh -huh. crushed rock, well, their shoes would last much longer. They'd wear the wax off instead of the good leather. In other words, when we first get a brand new pair, put some polish on them right away. Right, that's right. Well, I see you have some, a box here. Can we look in it and see what's in it? Why, there? sure. Here's what I call a polish waster. I mean, it's handy. You would, like, say, if you were going out or something like that, why, you can dab the, take it and dab the polish on, and, and, uh, but you might get it too thick. You'll oh, be wasting. Oh, I see. This little brush here, then, is what you put in the polish. polish on and then rub it on the shoe. And why, why did you say, why did you call it a polish waster? Yes, well, we sell them. Uh, but but uh, when they ask for them, naturally I'm glad to sell them. <laughs> but I always suggest or recommend that use the, get a, some plant and flannel of an old uh, ironing board, which is, or you know, pressing cloth. Uh -huh. and, uh, it's a soft rag. It's a yeah. soft rag, yes. Or you can buy them at your shoe repair shop. Why don't you polish this? this shoe that's right here for us so okay. we can see just how it should be done. Well first, I, you never want to use too much polish because you'll cake it on and that's not good. That'll make your shoe crack or look like it's cracking. Just a thin layer. Just a thin way. layer. See these cups right here? You work it in. Polish all around. Well, there was some dirt on that shoe first of all. Well, yeah, you notice the dirt that come off here on my cloth? Let's turn it over here. Yeah. So, oh, I see it now. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. And the dirt came... Don't you have to clean the dirt off first, wash it off or well, something? Well, you have to use... I mean, you can either use hand soap or saddle soap uh, to clean it off when it's very muddy. But just when there's dust on, I'd suggest just to use a cloth. That's all that's necessary. Just wipe them in the Yeah. Now, if you do wash it, you could use this little brush for, uh, um, uh, for saddle soap or soap. And, uh, and dab it on the soap in a little water and then scrub it thoroughly. I see. Well, that's a two-in-one brush then, isn't it? Well, that's right. Well, now I see you just were rubbing all the polish in there with this, this little piece here. Let's do the sides of this, too. I want to see if it takes the dirt off the sides of this shoe here. Oh, it will. Yeah, pretty, you're rubbing pretty hard, too, aren't you, Archie? That's, um... Mm -hmm. Turn it around uh -huh. there so we can, we can see just how you're putting this polish on. There we are. See how, see how black the, the uh, cloth is? So that doesn't make any difference though, does it, as far as polishing is concerned, whether the dirt comes off on the cloth? Oh yes, I mean, it, that's what you want. You want it to come off on the cloth and you know it's left the shoe. And then when it's dried a little... How long do we have to wait before it's, it's dried? Would you suggest maybe well, putting the wax on this shoe and then going, going to, to the next one before you do anything right, else? That's right, that's a good idea and that's, that's what they do in shining parlors. I see. Then what happens after we have the polish rubbed in good and all the dirt rubbed off? And then you take your shine brush. I'll move this over here so we have a little bit more room, Archie. Okay. And uh, you mustn't take your shine brush like this because all you'll do is mat it down. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'll just wear your brush out. And uh, if you take it like this, run it clear on through. Go if all the way across. All the way across, and that way your brush will, will never wear out, or it won't wear out as rapidly or fast. Well, now let me try that. Okay. Let's just see what, instead of, instead of scrubbing it like this, we want to go so all the way back and forth. Make it go like all the that, way right? through. That now, do you go across like this on the front part of the shoe? Do you go across like this on the side too, yes. or should we turn it to the you side? You can turn it to the side. And go this way. Yes. 
Well, I certainly can see a lot of difference between the top of the shoe and the back of it that we didn't polish. And that looks just very, very nice. And then if you want to use a shine claw, I mean, you use the fuzzy side, use the middle part, which you haven't put your polish on uh -huh. with, and rub it across or take your hand like this and rub it in thoroughly. I mean, you rub harder with the fuzzy side and then you take this smoother side. The hard side. Or the hard yeah. side and rub it lightly. Go back and forth and I would just have to put the wax on just once. Well, it's a good idea to put a light coat on with the ball of your fingers. Don't dig your fingernails in, but just put a little on the ball of your fingers. Uh -huh. And then rub it in lightly or make sure that you get the spots that you mi missed with your cloth. I see. Is this very hard to get off your hand? No, just good salt and water good will take water. it off. Uh -huh. Oh, well, Archie, what about this, um, this liquid shoe polish? Now, that's very easy. All you have to do is dip the brush in the bottle and, and smear the liquid shoe polish on. Is that better to use than this solid type wax? Well, no, it don't shed the water like the solid type wax does. And uh, it also, uh, people, it's a lazy way to shine a shoe. But uh, it'll uh, it'll cake up, and your shoe will crack well, it, from a liquid crack, polish. Crack yes. Shoe. So it is better to use the solid type solid wax. Solid type then. wax. Your shoes would last much longer. Well, what about this shoe that I have right here? Now that one that we just did was was leather. Yes. While we're talking about leather, what kind of leather is that? This is calf. Calf, calf. skin. Calf. Uh -huh. Are are uh, all shoes made out of calf skin? Well, most of them are made out of calf skin. Some are made out of horse hide. Some are made out of goat, goat skin. Oh, there's lots of different things. Yes. What do you call it? Well, they, with suede shoes, they reverse, reverse the leather. In other words, instead of using the hard side of leather, like the first shoe that we just made, this is kind of fuzzy, suede. Yes. Uh -huh. That's just the other side of the leather. Oh, right. I see. Hmm. Well, how do you take care of these? We certainly can't put polish on them. No, you don't put polish. What people should do with suede shoes is brush them off on her every time before you go out. Brush mm -hmm. them and keep the dust out because if they're dusty and you happen to get out in the rain, that makes mud. Well, there's a, what's this? I see this in this little box. What's this piece of paper? That little, uh, this here is a piece of sandpaper, uh -huh. which you use for spots. On shoes? On shoes, on suede, on, weight, on suede shoes. And uh, what you should do first with a suede shoe is use your suede suede brush, it brush it off, and what your suede brush won't take, then you take your sandpaper and run in, in a circular motion. And that won't hurt the shoe That won't it? hurt the shoe, the shoe at all. Oh, well, that's something that I didn't know before. And then you take your suede brush and rub over it hmm. again. Well, I'm certainly going to make myself a shoe shining kit. And thanks ever so much, Archie, for coming over and telling us about this afternoon. Goodbye.